second, my man. There we go. How's it going, brother? Oh, for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. Let me move some of my stuff out of the way real quick. This time I noticed, this time I noticed, y'all, I noticed that I wasn't, that I wasn't, what's it called, um, that I wasn't, um, that I wasn't muted, that I was muted, so, let me go ahead and do that again, welcome everybody, <laughs> thanks for messaging me, Luis, thank you, bro, uh, thank you for keeping me, what's it called, uh, uh hey man, it's awesome. thank you, Matt, thanks, Matt, <laughs> Mikey, I'm gonna do it again, and if you want, you can already unmute, <laughs> <laughs> All right, for sure, for sure. Let's I'm ready for it, man. Let's again. do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Take two. Here we welcome, go. Welcome back, everybody, to the Nerdy Chicano Live number three. If you're going in the correct cr cr chronology uh, canon here, number four, if you count the birthday special bonus episode that you had, as always, this is the Nerdy Chicano here to join you on a wonderful Wednesday afternoon. And as well, being joined by a new guest today, as I've got my main man, Mikey, Michael Chu for real. What you doing, baby? How you doing? What's up, bro? I'm good, man. I'm good. Just got some breakfast in me. Excited to chat with you this fine morning. It's going to be a good day. I'm excited to do this, man. Thank you for inviting me on. It's an honor. Matt, um, of course, bro. Thank you. Thank you for coming on, bro. Um, uh, cool. I can Thank you, Matt. Thank you for letting me know. Um, and, um, not much, man. Just another episode here. We're going to be talking to you all. We got a lot going on. Nolan on Twitch says, look at these two beautiful people. Nolan, that's <laughs> all up, you, Nolan? baby. That's all yeah, you. Man. That's Thanks all for coming you. Thanks by, Nolan. Yeah. Man, I, I really, I really thought, man, I really, what's it called? I really thought I wasn't going to do this again with the whole getting muted, 
but um <laughs> it happens it happens it happens bro. yeah i trust me i've done something of that nature many many times many yeah. technical errors and technical difficulties arise constantly so yeah. i get it what's going on man it is a wonderful wednesday afternoon at least here i don't know about over there you got like it's like 11 something over there 11.05, yeah, California, it's classic California weather, man, not too hot, not too cold, sunny, um, yeah. been be been getting better around here because more people are getting the vaccine, I guess, so yes, sir. things are slowly starting to, to recover and, and everyone's starting to feel a little safer, which is yeah. good, I'm starting to feel a little safer. Nice, um, nice. Still, obviously, everyone wear your mask. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to make it sound like I, I don't push for that. Because please, we need it, guys. Everybody wear your mask. But yeah, it's been it's been a lot more comfortable out in Cali as of late. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Um, I'm glad that you're doing well. Uh, you get vaccinated yet? Yeah. So I got the uh, first part of my vaccination, and then the second part I think I'm getting next Monday. I want to say. Yeah. yeah. Next Monday. I gotta look at mine. I think mine's like in two Fridays. Um, Sheesh. I, uh, hey, that that thing hurt, man. I, I was know. so sore the day after. It was rough. It next was Friday, rough. I get that next Friday, dude. That like you you told me, bro. You were like, "Yo, Raul yeah. was not lying." Like that thing put in dude. work. It's rough, dude. Yeah. Like the next day, I try to work out every day as much as I can, as much free as free time allows. And the next yeah. day, I couldn't even lift my left arm. Probably slightly higher than this was as high as I could go. Yeah. It was insane. Yeah, I had to insane. keep. What's it called? Lady at the vaccination center told me like. Just keep on moving it around. Make sure you keep, you know, circulating yep. your arm because and I was like, okay, cool. And then my mom was like, you know, just take a Tylenol after you're done. Make sure you're good. But <laughs> yeah, I was like, dude, that arm, that, that, that vaccine, I was feeling that thing course through my damn arm. Like I felt that thing. Oh yeah. It was hurting it's like real that. people. <laughs> it, it is real. Prepare yourself for a possible day off. Give yourself a day off after that second one for yeah. sure. Uh, next jab for me is May 19th. Her first jab was February. All right, man. Yeah, I'm glad that you're going to get vaccinated too, man. I, I told everybody, you know, next Friday I get it. You know, I got to recover first. And after that, I'm getting my ass to the movies, bro. I I'm getting my oh, ass to the yeah. movies. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I don't wait. I don't even know when Oscars are at, but I know that the father is playing at the theater. And I was like, I haven't seen the father yet, so I want to. Go and see that. So mm, we'll I haven't see. seen it yet either. That's one of the few films that yeah. I need to need to see in the in the near future because I've been hearing great things, fantastic things from everybody that's seen it. So yeah, definitely looking forward to seeing that in theater. Yeah, man, <clears throat> I'm really excited. Uh, but of course, y'all, uh, today is another episode of the Nerdy Chicano Live. As you know, this show goes eh, for like a good thirty minutes. Um, you know, I talk without audio, maybe. Um, <laughs> apparently, but, um, I talk with my guests, we, you know, you know, you know, just talk around see what's going on, how we're doing. And then for the last 30 minutes, we talk about a main topic, but of course y'all, um, I did want to go ahead and kick off with some announcements. Um, next Wednesday on twitch.tv slash the nerd course, URPS, we will be doing the sallow watch along because, oh, man. uh, you guys got me to $300 for the film. And I have not brainstormed the next goal, but Brad did say, so I don't have the, what's it called? The little, the little, what's it called? A bar up here, but we are, we have $4 and 20 cents already donated. So minus that for 250, if we get to 250 by the end of the week, we will do an, uh, another watch along slash commentary of uh hostel, Eli Oof. Rod's hostel. <laughs> Fuck man. But what a um, combo of films. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, uh, Nolan, everybody who has already expressed interest on coming on the commentary, uh, Salo watch along commentary will be on Wednesday at 8 30 PM central time on the nerd course, the RPS twitch.tv slash the nerd core on our, on the nerd core YouTube channel, YouTube, youtube.com slash C slash the nerd core. And I want to say the week after next week, the following week, we will be doing our fundraising, uh, eight hour stream. For the rest of before I leaves, um, before I leaves production, uh, what's it called? Budget. So, guys, as always, I must reiterate: if you want to get involved in the conversation, go over to www.streamelements.com/slash/the-nerdy-chicano/slash/tip and go and send in your donation. All the money that's being sent in via donations goes to before I leaves. Uh, upcoming final round of production. So we're just getting what we have right now. We have enough right now for actors being paid. We have enough for um, for gear to be rented. We have 
I think enough already for food on set. So what we need left is our uh, compensation for hotels for our actors that are coming out of town and post production costs. So uh, we're almost there, y'all. I, I need to look at my what's it called? Uh, at my at my um, budget here, but we we did a pretty great uh, bunch of uh, fundraising last episode. So. Um, <clears throat> we have a budget right now of $2,963.88. We need $3,500 to be there, to be ready to go into production in May mm -hmm. 21st to 23rd. So, guys, if you are uh, feeling generous, go and send over your your tips and such like that to www.streamelements.com slash the nerdy chicano slash tip. Or... Um, you know, if you want to send it without fees, uh, go ahead and ask me for my Venmo, Cash App, or PayPal. There it is. There it is, baby. There it is, man. How, how's it? How's it going, bro? How's it been out there? Uh, what you been up to? Watch anything as late? Uh, the last thing I saw, I think, was Godzilla versus Kong. I want to say. Yeah. Uh, I saw that in theaters actually. So that was my second time back in theaters since uh, getting my first shot. I saw nobody. Um, the week before, and then I just saw Godzilla. So those are the past two movies I've seen. Um, I wa I wish I could say that I liked both of them. I didn't, sadly. But it was it was definitely good just to sit in a theater, see those trailers go by, hear the AMC introduction again, re-signed up for A-list. So excited to be seeing more stuff. Hopefully we get to see Ray Raya and The Last Dragon soon. Um, might see Chaos Walking. Might put myself through that in a the theater. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Not hey. entirely sure yet, but we'll, we'll 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 figure it out soon. But yeah, those are know. the last two movies I've seen. I don't know about that one, bro. Um, yeah, man, yeah. it's it looks rough. It looks really rough, and I'm tired yeah. of seeing not movies I'm not happy with. So I, I might have to hold <laughs> off for a little bit. Yeah. Um. Yeah, man. I, I mean, I enjoyed Godzilla vs Kong, but like mm -hmm. the last thing I watched. Um, we watched Terminator 2 Judgment Day for the commentary oh, yesterday. Awesome. Yeah, we did that. Awesome. Uh, we watched the extended version, though. I've never seen that. How long How long is that? Or how much longer, I should say. Or I should ask. Two hours and 33 minutes. Oof. And how long is the original? Two Flat hours two and 17. Two? two hours, 17. Okay. okay. So with credits, you're looking at like around 2, 14, 2, 13. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... It's a I long. I saw one. your tweets about it. Yeah, yeah, you were saying it was a little rough of a watch. Yeah, uh, I said I've watched Andrei Tarkovsky's Stalker almost. Mm -hmm. I've watched it twice now, going on my third because it's gonna be somebody's cinema condition pick for uh, after these next coming three weeks. Oh, awesome! Okay. And I said that movie is slow, and it's like two <laughs> hours and twenty nine, but it's mm -hmm. slow, and you feel that slowness, and it's a hard. It's like a, it's a slow burn. Yeah. But I've never felt tired after finishing that film. With Terminator 2 Judgment Day extended, I was I was I went to tapping I, out I, by the I end of it. I haven't even uploaded the the file yet. I need to upload it. But I was just like I was tapping out. I'm like, dude, I'm fucking sleepy. Like I'm tired, <laughs> man. Like so I what's what's the this. what's the new what are like some of the new scenes added in because I know nothing I I honestly I didn't even know there was an extended edition of this Bro, film. I don't even remember what the theatrical cut had. But, you know, mm -hmm. our friend, our moderator here, Luis, who moderates on uh, on YouTube and on here on Twitch for my end, mm -hmm. and he moderates Nerdcore's Twitch, um, he said that there was a couple of things that were that were that were not in the in the theatrical version. Luis, if you're watching, bro, you might want to oh Luis is driving, never mind. He's not watching. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple of things, just like stuff within the actual mental institution that they had Linda Hamilton in. And like yeah. stuff with like Edward Furlong and and uh, Arnold, and yeah, but um, I, I I'm, I'm gonna what's it called? Uh, I'm real honest with you, bro. Like, shit, shit wasn't that impressive. The extended yeah. like the theatrical cut is way better, I think. I'm sure. Yeah, that's the funny thing is oftentimes I mean, we see these extended cuts, and a lot of the time they don't end up being better than the original. Yeah. Uh, it's longer isn't always better. I think that's. Yeah something that gets lost a lot, especially yeah. nowadays uh, yeah. where movies are often over two hours. And I've obviously like, I've seen the debate about Mortal Kombat being under two hours and is that enough time? And I don't know how mm. you feel about that, but I def, I mean, I think that for what the movie looks like, it's going to be, it seems like enough time. It seems like some characters are not going to get as much of a shine as others, which kind of sucks. Mm. But uh, 
hopefully this is just the start of a series. I'd be I'd be totally cool with starting out with this movie and seeing some spinoff films mm-hmm. or, you know, some a Shaolin Monk spinoff movie with Liu Kang, Kung Lao. How sick would that be, you know? By the way, um, thank you so much to Nolan. Um, Fifty dollars to the cash app. Thank you so much, Nolan. That oh, was awesome, Nolan. Fifty-four dollars and twenty cents. Uh, if I subtract that from two fifty, that should be. Um, yeah, somebody did donate fifty-four dollars and twenty cents. Uh, you gotta love them. Uh, one hundred ninety-five dollars and eight cents. Uh, no, in eighty cents. I'm sorry. Uh, go. Mm. That's 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 how much we have left to do the uh, hostel. Uh, but thank you, Nolan, so much. Um, I don't remember if you. If you um, got the Indiegogo when it was out, but if you don't, I would like to remind everybody, anybody who donates today gets the film when it releases. Like, you'll have, mm-hmm. the, you'll have the unlisted YouTube link to watch it. Please don't leak it. But, yeah, when the film <laughs> yeah. releases, you'll get it. Um, but, yeah, dude, I watched, so I watched uh, Terminator 2, but I did watch something else. Tell um, me about it. I've been going through that one card Y set. Yeah. Last night, I watched In the Mood for Love. Awesome. And um, before you continue, is that your, uh, that's your favorite from, from uh, mm-hmm. director Wong? Okay. Yeah. Cool. From, from Wong Kar Wai, that is my favorite of his. Mm. Uh, that's that restoration. Wow. I mean, I'm going to go more in depth on it on Friday because I am doing mm. the retrospective stream. Y'all, uh, I just have 2046 to watch and I'm gonna watch that tonight, but great film as well. Wow, man, that's restoration. Like it, like the colors pop a lot more. Like, Yes, it looks really different from the regular version that really? that we have, as a different aspect ratio. But I, the magic is still there for me, and it, it's beautiful. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm excited, dude. I need to get up on this Criterion game, man. Th- I, I don't sick, own dude. a Criterion. I don't own a single Criterion, so I I might have to start with some sets, perhaps. And this is one of the ones at the the top of my list. For sure. Have you seen all of his films? I, I don't think I've ever asked you that. Have you seen all of his movies? I have not watched 2046. I have not watched Ashes of Time, and I have not watched the uh, My Blueberry Nights and the Grandmaster. Oh, okay, so, I um, haven't seen My Blueberry Nights, but I'm excited to check that out. Yeah. Grandmaster, though, awesome film. Yeah, I'm excited to hear your thoughts on it. Yeah, dude, I'm I'm gonna I'm excited to ca- to catch that. Um, I've been wanting to watch that, but you know, I got these and I was like, I'm gonna just make my way through all of his stuff soon. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Ashes of Time, Blueberry Nights, and and Grandmaster because 2046. I was gonna watch twenty forty six, but the the what's it called um. Oh uh, wow, let me go ahead and not say it like that because I'll be incriminating myself. Um, on Prime <laughs> Video, there is twenty forty six is on Prime Video. Mm-hmm. It has yeah. the wrong aspect ratio, and then oh. it, and then I was gonna watch it with friends on another ocean, but my boat did not have an English subtitle file, and it only had it oh, wow. in Spanish. So to accommodate those on the boat who don't speak Spanish <laughs> or read Spanish, I said, well, we can't watch it. So, you know, then the boat said, we're going to have to wait for another day. Possibly yeah. when the shore catches this, this Blu-ray <laughs> and can rip it to somewhere. Oh, yeah. Send it to that ocean. But yeah. uh, that, that Amazon Prime version, I didn't know that's not in the... Uh, Correct aspect ratio. That's the only. T- Dude, that's the only place where I've seen it. It's slimmed in, bro. Like the what's yeah. it called? The the uh, ridge. The the actual aspect ratio. It's wide as shit. It's wow. wide as okay. fuck, man. Um, I'm gonna need to check this out then. This in, this real version of the film. Yeah. I, I've been depriving myself. I don't know why. I I. It just doesn't make sense to me why they have it in that aspect ratio on Prime mm-hmm. Video. It just doesn't make fucking sense. But come on, um, Prime. what's going on? Yeah, come on, Prime. Come on, man. Come on, Bezos. You you should know this. <laughs> Um, but that money's got to go somewhere. Put it into the widescreen, guys. Put it into the widescreen. <laughs> uh, but how, how's work been, man? How's school going? Um, Ooh, fuck, man. I mean, Shit, yeah, dude. dude I, yeah, I think you and I, I was just talking to Sabrina about this yesterday, too. Like, we're all in the same kind of boat right now where it's just rough, dude. It's Let rough it fucking to, uh... end already. Let it <laughs> Dude, man. School, I mean, school is what it is, right? It's online at the moment, so... I just switched majors, so it's been a kind of weird transition oh, nice. doing that all online. Yeah, I switched from business communications because I f- felt like that fit more in my wheelhouse and also more of possibly what I wanted to do in the future. Um, but yeah, transitioning mm-hmm. to that during uh, quarantine, uh, cl- online class and online counseling and all that has been rough, unbelievably rough. And it's a, it's a really tough transition. But uh, in terms of work, like YouTube stuff, 
Um, it's been hard, man. I mean, you know the show. I'm sure we're going to get into it at some oh, point, course, so I won't speak too much about it yet. But just finding guests is tough, and uh, scheduling is a huge thing because everyone – I get it, man. Everyone is completely on – a whole different schedule everyone's got different time zones and whatnot so when you do like an interview show like that it's time it's tough to get pitch. yeah it's tough to get guests within a window of time where it's comfortable for me and for them so those have been the difficulties as of late but i, I mean i i've been trying to um stay afloat you know what i mean i think that getting the vaccine definitely alleviated a lot of other anxiety i had yeah. uh in my mind and in my heart at that time so right now it's just kind of figuring out how I want to structure my channel beyond just interviews is, is I, I think the next step. And I yeah. think that's the current struggle, but also it's exciting because new stuff, you know, creating is always fun. And I think that um, and this is something I've talked about on my show many times. If you're not having fun doing this. There's no point in doing it. Of you're, course you're, it's going to, sh it'll show, it'll yeah. show. So, yeah. I genuinely love making the content I'm making here. Uh, yeah. I love making the content that I make in Nerdcore. I love doing Between the Frames every Monday. I love being able to talk about these movies and, you know, not having to do a little full-on, what's it called, uh, dissection, but like, you know, a review slash dissection with you all and being able to yeah. talk to people on Wednesday. And then every now and then on Fridays when I finish these sets, I can do my retrospective streams. Like, it's a lot of fun. But what sucks the most is especially when you have a show that's reliant on guests, reliant on guests to come in. Absolutely. I would love more than anything to have a lot of my international friends on here. I have mm -hmm. a couple of friends who live in the Philippines, the Philippines, who live in, um, who live in Brazil, who live in so many parts of the world that I would love to have on this show and be able to talk to them. But time zones are the biggest thing yeah, that man. is stopping that. Because right yeah. now, I'm pretty sure, Matt, if you're still in here, by the way, if you're still watching uh, on YouTube, can you tell me what time it is right now on uh, over there where you're at? Like, if I had you on the show at this time right now, you're pretty much getting ready to go to bed. It's insane. It's insane. The Philippines. Also, think... Shut up, Aiden. I said the Philippines. The Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> Not the Philippines. What's up, Aiden? What's going on, Aiden? How you doing, bro? I love the FaceTime. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> that's sick, Aiden. Nice, man. I dig it, bro. I don't think you'll get clowned on. It's 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 pretty sick. No, the Philippines. <laughs> the Philippines, man. No, dude. I said the Philippines. I said the Philippines. Oh man, to all my Filipino brothers and sisters and non-binary folk out there, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, God, man. Yeah, the Philippines. I have a, got a good amount of friends in the Philippines. They're great. People. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah man. Uh, international, like even UK, right? Like. Yeah. Either that's either getting up unbelievably early for them or for you at that point to get a, a, a reasonable time to record. And that's yeah. what I've been doing recently, too, is just chatting with people from the UK and just trying to figure out, like, what works. Yeah. You know? So a wonderful friend crazy. who came on the show on Nerdcore once um, for Batman v Superman review. Uh, she's from France. Incredible uh, oh, uh, wow. photographer, y'all. You should please follow Claire MRCL Marcel. Uh, she's an incredible uh, photographer. Um, we had her on the show and she, it, she was up at like three in the morning. I was like, wow, let's just, let's, let's go ahead and, um, have me be the one be up late like that instead of you, because that <laughs> oh, is yeah. terrible that like, why would you, why would I, why would you do that for my show? No, dude, it happens, man. I, I feel like that's just like, right when you're starting out, that's just such a natural thing to do. You don't, you don't see, you don't ever think about these things. You know, until you're actually in the scenario and someone's yeah. telling you how late they're up and you're like, oh, crap, maybe I should have done it on my time. But yeah. such is the nature of just learning and doing things in, in this space is just messing up <laughs> and yeah. figuring out what works and what sticks. Aiden out here saying he's sexy as fuck. Yes, you are, bro. It's That's true, like, man. It's Aiden, true. I'm over here saying this, but Aiden does a freaking show on stereo every Friday after the what's it called? The, the uh, Falcon, what's Winter it called? Falcon Winter yeah. Soldier. And honestly, bro, I'm looking at I'm look I look at Aiden. I'm like, bro. You have no idea how badly I'd love to be on that and, and talk with you about this stuff, but like, or listen to it when you guys premiere it, but I'm fucking dead asleep at that time. I am <laughs> yeah, done. Man. Uh, I'm so jealous of Mikey getting to interview my favorite YouTuber. Yeah, uh, we're going to talk about that later. Oh, at the, for the, sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but. Yeah, we'll definitely get into that. I'm just, um, what's it called? I look at these guys doing shows at like three fucking o'clock in the morning. I'm like, nope. 
Nope, can't be me. Dude, or even, even, even guys like you who are doing multiple shows a week. Like, I feel like my brain would just, ex multiple live shows. Like, I don't even do mine live. You know what I mean? Yeah. I edit them and they go up on Sundays most of the time and that's it. But if you're doing a schedule, people expect it to be on time every week. I mean, solo or not, that's just hard in itself. So I commend you, man. It's tough. You're doing, you're doing a hard task with school and all. I barely make it to the show. Um, <laughs> fucking Aiden. <laughs> uh, but I mean, Mikey, it's, it's all, it's honestly all about like, just to, to, on, to be honest, it is mostly just about, uh, consistency and discipline. If I have, if nice. I, if, if you just stay consistent, like the schedule will, will, will become second nature to you. But yeah. there are days that my brain, not my brain, my body and my brain are just like, dude, take a fucking break, please. Yeah, and it's always when you it's it's too late already. It's to the point where you can't enjoy your break when you're just like I need to just sit down and just get a cup of water in me and just watch some TV or whatever, man, or some YouTube yeah. videos. It's rough. It's rough. Yeah, it's really <sighs> rough. But you know, I, that that is the that is the rules of the game per se. But Literally, yeah. I mean, you got uh, this. Uh, like you said, just said consistency and discipline. Those are yeah. two things that. And a thick skin, I would say those are the three main things you have to have yeah. to, to be successful on this platform. It's just sticking with it. The algorithm notices that you're sticking with it, regardless yeah. of what you may think. It, it, it shows, for sure. Yeah. I want to thank you all so much. I, I had him, what's it called, brought this up. But on YouTube, we got some good amount of plays on uh, some, some views on that last Between the Frames episode awesome. of Nymphomaniac. I'm pretty sure it's because about sex. So, you know, you guys thought that you could see some sex on the screen, but that's not how it went. So thank you guys so much. Uh, it means a lot, but it's just like, look, did I ever tell you the story about the love episode? The one on Gaspar Noe no. as well? No. I, okay, hold on. So like, let me go ahead and bring the accurate number here. Which I'm, is also an extremely, ex I mean, just as explicit, if not more, I would yeah. say, than Nymphomaniac well, 1 and 2. It's more explicit because the actors are actually having sex yeah. on camera. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I need to bring the specific number here because I don't want to step out of line here and give you all the wrong number. <laughs> but um, I'm guessing people thought they were going to see the movie and be able to see some, you know, free titty and free uh, ass. And yeah, all that. man. But like that's that wasn't the case. Um, let me go. We're just, here to, we're just here to talk about the sex, not to show no, it. No, we're just so, talking you're in the wrong about place. The sex. <laughs> in the wrong place, bro. Come on. Um, Hold on, where are you? I'm gonna take your time. Uh, yeah, yeah, time. it's because I gotta go through pages on on YouTube of this. Here we go, dude. Yeah, with every show that you make, seriously, <laughs> you can't imagine how many videos got on there. It's Please, actually let's, increased let's in views. Of course, hey. <laughs> so the, 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 the horniness episode. will never stop, bro. The horniness will never stop from yeah. the end. This was the um the fourteenth episode of the Cinema Condition on season one, and we talked about Gaspar Noah's love, and. If you guys don't remember, um, I used to not do it like actual like this. Uh, you you can get the video version of season two if you go to the Patreon and you're on Patreon. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, you, it was just audio. And I put gotcha. the art of the podcast next to the poster. And that was it with the audio in the back. Uh -huh. But my thumbnail, you know, was kind of suggestive. You know, it was kind of suggestive <laughs> and it looked suggestive. But it was still again. It wasn't. It wasn't breaking to any TOS here. Mm -hmm. That video got, and I'm gonna be. Re I'm, I'm not even lying to y'all. Give us the number, man. Give us the number. Ninety-six thousand three hundred and forty-four oh views. Y'all are some <laughs> horny motherfuckers. What's what's the what's the like to dislike ratio on that video? Oh, they they hated me. Fifty-nine <laughs> likes. I was gonna say. Fifty-nine likes and a hundred and forty dislikes. No way! Yeah. Oh my goodness, man! People really thought they were getting something else. Yeah, and I'm, I'm so I'm my my theory is like like so apparently around this time, a TikTok about this film went viral. Mm. It was this girl saying like if you liked um if you liked the 365 days it was on Netflix, watch videotape yourself watching the first five minutes. I mean the first two minutes <laughs> of Gaspar Noé's Love, and mm. and and post it on TikTok. And I'm guessing that's what people, why people were coming to my, to my, um, absolutely, to my episode. Um, great Isn't episode. that so crazy that TikTok is like where people find movies now? Like yeah. it's, it's. I don't have a TikTok, but I mean, I always see memes and jokes about people being like, "Have you ever seen 
this underrated film and it's like 500 days of summer you know or inception <laughs> coming off tiktok which is hilarious but yeah tiktok it's crazy almost, uh, tiktok almost made a come and see viral they're like what's it called they did wow like, really yeah they did one of like uh what's it called world war ii films that don't get that much attention and i agree uh come and see does not get much attention absolutely and they put that one they put europa europa um I did not see Son of Saul in there, but you know, Son of Saul is a really good one. Great but, film, um, yeah. But yeah, the it's weird, dude. I, I have a TikTok for watching content to quench my thirst at times. Um, <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> that's all I have it for. And mm -hmm. um and to support the homies like Sabrina when they make uh, regular Absolutely, yeah. 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 That's all I got it for. But um I don't post anything i don't really follow a lot of things just like mm. i have my accounts that i follow for the thirst and when they when i'm when i'm feeling extra thirsty i go over to the to open the app and i'm like okay cool so it's, here we uh, are it's tiktok time guys here we TikTok go time. yeah it's tiktok time right? <laughs> yeah uh, your fit grandma be doing some work out there man yeah your fit grandma <laughs> yeah that's she's an actual grandmother yeah, she's like an older woman. She's like sixty something. But she she's not a, okay. You know what? Okay, okay, respectable. <laughs> <laughs> glad oh, she's man. on the grind and glad that you're getting uh, enjoyment out of it, my friend. Yeah. That's good to hear. Yeah, but um, yeah, man, that's just that's what's been going on here. School. I'm so I'm I'm graduating uh, next month. Mm -hmm. Holy shit! Exciting, man. dude. That's so, exciting, man. I'm yeah. jealous. I'm jealous. Don't be jealous because um, the the pain of post grad. Is gonna be a pain. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna man. find a job. I'm, I'm gonna sure. find a new place. Uh, but you know, right now my mind is mostly concentrated on before I leave and, and finishing that up because of course. that's what's of course. important right now. So, um, yeah, yeah. I just I'm glad you're doing well, man. I'm glad your family's doing well too. Appreciate it, brother. Yeah. Same to you. Hope yeah. hope hope all your loved ones and everything staying safe and and healthy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everybody in this household is going to be vaccinated or almost vaccinated already. Perfect. Um, Good to hear. Same yeah. here. Same here. Yeah, man. I'm telling you, man, I can't wait to start licking faces again. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I just can't wait to just start seeing more people. Like I've just finally started to see my friends that are vaccinated. So, yeah. I, I mean, I, I just miss company. I'm a, I'm a introverted extrovert where yeah. I can be so very social for brief periods of time. And uh, yeah, I just miss it. I miss it big time. That's what the pandemic made me realize. I was like, for so long, I said, Oh, I'm an introvert. I like staying inside because I did stay inside. But yeah, I also really enjoyed my me time when I would just wake up in the morning, get on the metro, go to the cinema. I stay at cinema. I talk to some random old dude with a pack of cigarettes and talk to him about movies. <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah, like it was just that was the fun part. But the pandemic made me realize, like, I actually like talking to people. I actually enjoy yeah, meeting man. new people. Um, yeah. Do I do it to the extent where I can go to like a club and talk with crowds of people? No, that shit makes me uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But like mm -hmm. meeting new people and talking to them, like I love that stuff. And that's yeah. what this pandemic made me realize that like. I really kind of do need the socialization because without it, absolutely, I am falling apart. <laughs> yeah, and you know what's crazy is that there are little silver linings like with this quarantine is that you know you and I are friends now, you know, or sure. me and Aiden, you know, it's just building those bonds through Discord or through Twitter. It, mm -hmm. It's crazy. I, I haven't made this many friends online since the days of uh, of uh, AIM, you know. So <laughs> this, this is this is this is all new. It's awesome. Yeah, that's that's the good thing too. You know, I, I know I talked to Aiden about wanting to shoot with him. Uh, now with the face yeah. tat, it's gonna be pretty cool. Um, you know, oh yeah, that's yeah. yeah, that's sick. And then you know, of course, wanting to make a trip out to to places to go see my friends who are out there, and getting to finally meet up with some people who I've been wanting to meet up. Um, now that I'm vaccinated, I'll be actually be able to go to one of my friends' weddings. Who oh, that's will, awesome, man. Probably next year, so. Uh, it's gonna be great, man. And I'm just I'm just really I'm really happy that we're gonna get we're getting to that point. Um, and we're hopefully almost going to be out of this mess. Uh, Normalcy soon. is on the horizon, brother. That's all I can say. Normalcy is on the horizon. We're 100%, close. 100%, bro. 100%. We're close. So I, I think it's time that we stop messing around. Let's go into our main topic here. I, I brought in Mikey right. because, of course, Mikey's a great friend of mine, man. And we, we had a fun time talking on, 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 uh, on, on Chew on This. You go check out my episode. I, I thought it was a pretty damn Absolutely. good episode. Awesome it's, episode. Awesome episode. Yeah. But something about something about Mikey kind of stood stood out to me. You know, I, I've been on a lot of shows where I'm interviewed and stuff. And yes, um, they're they're pretty good interviews. 
But Mikey speci- specifically, Mikey's a really good interviewer. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, I'm Thank being you. real honest here with you, man. Um, as honest as I can be, Mikey is a really, really good interviewer. Um, Mikey, you just had on um, what's his uh, from Pretty Much It. Eric, yeah, Eric Striffler from Pretty Much yeah. It. First of all, yeah. how the hell did you get that? Well, this is uh, a funny story. So we mentioned it briefly in the episode, but way back when I first started the show, I mean, I've been a Pretty Much It fan since like 2010, or a fan of Eric's, I should say, for even prior to Pretty Much It, since like 2010 or 2009 when I was real young, um, mm-hmm. like nine or 10 years old, <laughs> which is insane. Um, so yeah, once I found out about him, I moved on to Pretty Much It, and I went through them from my middle school to high school years and been a huge fan. And then um, finally, I, I got the gumption to start my own YouTube channel and I wanted to do some type of interview show. I've always been fascinated mm-hmm. uh, by interviews, interviewing the idea of it. Um, and of course, I, I you, you know, you probably have done this in the past where you just reach out to yeah. all your heroes and you're just, you know, hey, you want to come on the show? I don't mean and to you, interrupt. I don't mean to interrupt, oh, bro, please, but it, uh, what's it, it called? Cousin is asking me to go open the back door, but continue the story and I will be right back right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, it was strange because, you know, at that time when you're young, you don't really expect anyone to shoot back, even though you're sending out all your uh, all your messages and emails and whatnot. But then, lo and behold, probably three or four weeks went by and then I got a message back on Facebook. This is kind of showing this age of this uh, this story. This is back in 2017, right before my my 17th or 18th birthday, I want to say. Yeah, something like that. Eric messaged me back and said he was totally excited and down to come on. Um, and we recorded uh, our first episode, which was an insane, insane experience for that to be one of the first like two or three episodes of my show. And that ended up being a lost episode. It got deleted off of YouTube because it was recorded on a live stream, not on a uh, not on an actual like Zoom like we're doing right now or on oh, Skype. Wow. Yeah, so we lost it, and um, I wasn't in. I, I messaged him, but we weren't in contact for multiple years uh, after that. Um, and then just last year, uh, when I said I was going to restart the show, I reached out to him yet again in hopes that we'd be able to get something back together. And we've been talking, uh, emailing back and forth since, and we finally got the scheduling right to get him on. And nice. it, it's it's one of my favorite episodes. It was a really fun one. Um, a lot of people have been enjoying it, so I appreciate you guys that have seen it and. Uh, and subscribe since then. Uh, it's awesome, man. Yeah, that was a really fun one to do. So, so I, mean, I got a couple questions. First of all, what's Go it called? It, yeah. I, I got to finish it. I got to finish that episode. I'm not done with it yet. But mm. you know me, I'm fucking super busy. Busy, man. But, I get it. Yeah. Um. So, 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 chew on. So you, what's it called? Reboot. So to say, you rebooted. Chew on this. You lost a bunch Absolutely. of episodes. You lost a bunch of episodes before this. I, the, only that one only, only that, one? that one and it's it's strange because yeah i use the exact same recording method um up until this reboot of the show for it for every episode before and after that was the exact same method of, of recording and i remember finishing it up on google hangouts if you remember oh, yeah. uh, that platform oh, and yeah. we recorded it on google hangouts uploaded it onto youtube the and it was there for yeah, dude. <laughs> Circles and Google Plus, Google Hangouts was a rough time to be a content creator. It was the worst. You guys don't know how bad it was if you weren't doing stuff back then. It was terrible. Um, guys, if you if you just, think YouTube is bad now, it's worse before. Trust me. Y'all, you could not frame like this on Google Hangouts. You could not. Nope. 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 Because nope, nope, nope. whenever anybody spoke, it automatically switched to that person on there. <laughs> yeah. So and you couldn't do anything about it. Nope. There you was do anything about it. It was super tough to frame on uh, on Google Hangouts, and that whole th- uh, thing from Google Hangouts, you could not turn that option off. It was it literally no. came with the actual software of Google Hangouts. We used to record on Google Hangouts our the podcast, but we only did audio at that time, so we were fine mm-hmm. with it. But it was still the biggest pain in the ass that uh, I've had to deal with. Yeah. Absolutely, and even like. After a successful episode, like let's just say one didn't get deleted, it would take hours for it to show up in your uploads. So you wouldn't even know if it actually worked or not until like the next day sometimes. It's insane. It was insane. It was yeah. a crazy time, man. Crazy yeah. time in YouTube history. You, 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 would, uh, you, would, you would hope that, you know, back then when, when you were doing this, because I'm pretty sure it was when Anchor wasn't a thing. You're like, well, you yeah, know. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't. You were like, oh, well, you know, I, I don't have my video version up, but at least I can get my, my – um, my audio, but of course, Anchor wasn't a thing back then. Literally, back then, you had to pay for podcast uh, hosting. 
which is also so insane. Yeah, yeah. It's, so crazy. Yeah. Times the times of in the past four years, so much has changed in this space in terms of create like the creator space on the internet. It's insane. Yeah, I'm. I'm just you know, and of course, the learning curve with how to do the actual technical stuff. Um, yeah, man. That's why I'm glad <laughs> I'm a student of the Dwayne Burke School of Broadcast. Uh, yeah. Sam, yeah. he's been helping out a lot, man. I've been trying to watch those in my free time as much as I can because yeah. I am tech. Uh, tech is not my thing. It's not this, my forte. I know nothing. Yeah. This <laughs> yeah, is only nothing. possible because of the Dwayne Burke School of Broadcast. Uh, yeah. Technical yeah. difficulties with Dwayne Burke. Uh, Ron Burke made a YouTube channel. Go and check him out. Uh, great guy. Um, but you know, throughout your throughout your episodes and stuff, and I, I you know, I'm, you're such a great interviewer, man. I mean, there's just great things about Thank interview. You. I love interviewing. Um, I have my own interview yeah. show that I could probably get you on one of these days. Uh, it's not, it's not like this, awesome. but it's more so about you know the person you are and about how you mm. how you think and how you feel. Um, but interviewing is so great. I tell people I love interviewing because like for a good hour and a, hour and a half, I sit down with the person and I'm basically just learning about their life and I'm yeah. learning about the things that make them them. And I feel like that's, I, that's such a special thing, especially when somebody does it right. Because I hate coming on stuff and to be asked like, so what, so what, what inspired you? Like what inspires you to make movies? And I'm like, like, it's such a like yeah it's, like, it's, it's, it's tough it's tough it's, because it's, tough. it's a question like, that is necessary to an extent but yes. also it comes with how you frame the question right yeah. and how you approach that discussion i think that but like mikey to... here on our episode he knows of the filmmakers i love he knows the style that i kind of emulate yeah. <laughs> and he was like i see something that's very malicky within your work mm. is malik a big part of your work that inspires you and I, I told him on the other side, I was like, I'm a Malik fan, but it's not something I ever took into consideration. So I thank mm -hmm. him so much for thinking that like my work is looks like Terrence Malick. It I, does, I feel man. Like it does. That it truly question, does. And I feel like that question makes for better conversation than straight up. What inspires yeah. you to make movies? Yeah, there has, it has, there has to be, and this is something that comes with time, obviously, of doing these episodes. You have to give when you like give in a sense, not just asking a question, but you also have to give information. You kind of have to frame the question in a way to where it can't just be a yes or no or just a one sentence answer. Mm -hmm. That's where where you get stuck oftentimes. It's not anybody's fault. It's not the interviewer's no, fault. It's not no. the interviewee's fault. But I mean, some questions, I mean, you, it's just a simple answer sometimes and you can't really go too in depth about it. So you have to be able to yeah. uh, to frame the questions in interesting ways and know who you're interviewing. I think that's a big problem with shows I've been on personally too, where um, they've seen like two videos of mine and they think that's all that I do and that's oh, it, you know, man. and 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 it's rough, man. It's rough. And you just sit and smile through it because you appreciate the time. But yeah, sometimes coming on these shows, it can be it can be tough yeah. for sure. But and like I've always said, interviewing should always be like, you know, leaving a trail of like candy or like snacks. It's That's like perfect once way to you say get it. one, yeah. you get to the other. And, you know, exactly. if, you know, you get to the other, you get to the other, you're just you're leading them in, you're roping them in, but you're not tugging too hard, but you're not tugging too, 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 uh, too slow. You know, you're perfectly mm. trying to get what you need to get out. And of course, there's times when you want to ask something that you can't get out. And you might want to circle back and be able to talk about that because that yeah. you know it, it always to me it always comes down to the way that the question is framed you know I, I can't, absolutely you know I can't straight up just say like you know um, fuck um, Lucas you know what would you have done with your with your trilogy you know if you would have if you would have continued it on you know the sequel yeah. trilogy you know it's more so like you know trying to get there man instead of just outright you know blasting the question in front of you. Yeah, but I do and, know. And it, it, mm -hmm. No, go again. Yeah, I was just gonna say it, it also helps. You have to make the person you're talking to feel comfortable too. If you're asking them just extremely vague questions, yeah. the experience will get sour very fast, wh yeah. whether you know it or not. <laughs> also, the sad thing is that a lot of producers write these questions for people too. So that's that's yeah, the, which that's is, the is 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 uh, it sucks, man. It sucks. Yeah. And then publicists get involved too. That's why I'm that's why I'm glad that right now. What's it called? It's all like, you know, non-publicist level stuff. Like, it'd be great for me to talk, like sit down with like a Scorsese and talk with him and stuff. But like, oh, absolutely, like that's yeah. when you start, what's it called, getting into publicist level. And it's like, God, man, I, you got to like limit me on what I need to ask. Like, I, I want to just yeah. talk. I want to talk. And has, like, that ha has that happened to you yet where you've had that experience where you had to limit your questions? 
Mm, I so not really, but when I interviewed Zach Stentz, um, I said, "Sir, if I ever ask anything that I shouldn't be asking when it comes to certain movies that you've done or you're making and you can't talk about that yet, uh, what's it called?" Lisa Arizona goes, "It's all right. Like if it's stuff that you don't that you mm. that I can't answer, I just will will say if we can move on from that." Okay, but, um, for sure, yeah, it's a yeah. good way to approach it, honestly. Yeah, but like other than that, it wasn't not much. Go, not, not much like that you know everybody's kind of come at me with like yeah I'm kind of an open book I can talk about whatever um, mm. you know Jason Inman and Ashley V. Robinson when I had them on what's it called Jason gave a whole ass pitch about how to make like a Fantastic Four film and I'm like yeah that's, that's kind of great like you know I was like dude like you, know, it's like, you probably shouldn't have done that. You know, you can give giving out ideas for free out here. But <laughs> yeah, um, seriously. Like, I was like, you know, that was something that I was implying to get. And since then, we started this whole movement of uh, putting a hashtag of uh, Jason Inman for uh, for Fantastic Four uh, to, to get to get him to write to get him to write it to get him to write the film. But um, yeah, dude. Um, but it's just it's it's like I said, you're such a good interview, man. I, and I want to know like any, what what episode as of late has been really like a surprise for you? What, what which one have you had a lot of fun like getting to know the people that you had on? Honestly, and don't every say mine. Ep- <laughs> Yours is included in this for sure. Every episode I've had since the reboot has been so fun. Unbelievably fun. Um, And in different ways. I think in some episodes, it's more movie-based, obviously, and we talk Mm -hmm. more about specific films. Like, we did our Valentine's Day episode, which was – I think that was a really interesting experience. I saw a lot of bad movies. (laughs) A lot of really bad rom-coms and and cheesy flicks leading up to that one. And uh, just chatting about that for an extensive period of time with two – Great friends of mine, Ash and Kristen. Um, they're awesome. They've been on the show multiple times. Mm-hmm. And every time I have them on, it's a treat. Obviously, the episode that we did was awesome because it encouraged me to exploring more international films yeah. prior to, to, to you coming on. I think that's what's really fun about it is just doing the research beforehand and yeah. seeing – what this individual likes you know getting to know a person through their film taste or through their video game taste right and yeah. uh it's fun yeah man all of it's been fun and then we I had a big conversation about episode. wrestling too and we had a big conversation yeah, man. about wrestling yeah. i didn't expect that i didn't expect that honestly exactly exactly and it's it's finding those little tangents that you can cling to and keep yeah. it going and 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 and, and project it into the next topic yeah. like you said and somehow bring everything into co- a cohesive uh a cohesive episode and and those episodes like the one that you're on for example is like very few edits in it too like it's just us talking for the the entire time um which is some video overlay and and the 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 aspect of doing this show that i enjoy is just the conversation really that comes from it because i don't like to just ask questions and hopefully you felt this way when you were on the show but i want it to be more so like two friends just chilling out yep. like i'll ask you a question mm-hmm. but we're gonna get back to just talking too you know what i mean about random stuff like for example mm-hmm. we got onto wrestling out of nowhere yeah um and yeah that's kind of the goal of the show is just to make everyone feel like they're just listening to two friends talking regardless of how well i know the other person at the other end of the uh computer so it's been fun man it's just been fun getting to meet new people and getting to, to chat with them and getting to know them for sure, all these episodes have been great since the reboot. I would, that can definitely say that. And it's and it's a lot of fun. And it reflects, man, because like, you know, I, I I I know when I know when I listen to episodes or I watch people, like I know when y'all aren't having fun and when y'all aren't enjoying what mm. you're doing. You know, for and sure. that's and that's for sure. what easily makes me click off of uh, of stuff like instantly. that instantly. Like we said, dude, you you can tell, man, you can tell. Yeah. You and even you can see it in yourself. Like let's just say you go back and watch an older mm-hmm. video or whatever, you know when you're not happy. Yeah. You can see it. You can see it, man. Yeah. Your audience will never, will never, ever, let's go, well, well, you know, they're wrong about some stuff, but, like, your audience do, doesn't lie, man. Like, they know. Like, they they, they, yeah. they know how to spot it, you know. Yeah. You you may not see it, but, like, your audience are, are not stupid. Yeah, it's even crazy. Like, I have a very small following at the moment, and still I get one or two. I have one or two really cool fans that will reach out to me when they could sense something is amiss right and it's yeah. crazy to think wow you guys actually noticed this so it's it's yeah. kind of scary in one way that as this continues to grow man i gotta be i mean i'm already transparent on here but you know i have to be mm-hmm. ready for all the and, I, and same with you you have to be ready for just the feedback of that of people yeah. seeing your emotions as as you record it and having the right intentions going into recording i think 
yeah. changes a lot of it too. If you're doing it for the wrong reasons, eventually it'll show. Yeah. Who you got coming up? Oh, I got some cool episodes coming. Um, we got Zach Pope. Um, he's an awesome movie reviewer. I I love I love him solely because. I mean, his videos are great, but he's just such a positive, positive force in this uh, community. And we need more of it. I think that's also something I want to push with the show is just having positive conversation about film or yeah. just positive discourse in general. Because, I mean, you know, man, film Twitter is the most toxic or letterbox, yeah. like those the really hardcore <laughs> letterbox people are like so toxic, man. It's insane. Yeah. It's insane. So, yeah, I really appreciate Zach's candor and his uh, and his kindness. He's been unbelievably kind. And that's another thing with Eric, too. You'd be surprised. Um, a lot of these uh, these bigger guys got there because of how kind they are. Exactly. Um, and it shows. And it shows in who their audience is. And, uh, and when they've come on the show, for example, Eric, like everyone that's come from his channel has been unbelievably kind that has reached out to me after that. So it definitely shows. Uh, we have Zach, Brandon Hanna, uh, who yes, I'm sure sir. is a friend of this show as well. He's yes, going to be coming sir. on. We both had a couple delays, which is completely understandable. I yeah. had a delay on him, and then he had a delay on me. And and. Yeah. Such is the nature of of just doing this kind of a show, and I completely understand. But that's another one I'm really looking forward to diving into the sciency brain of Brandon because he's a smart fella. He's a he's he's Dude. he's for sure one of the the smartest guests I'm gonna have on the show for a long time. He's a smart guy. Brandon, you're listening to this. I feel like you probably are. Uh, love you, man. But like yeah, Brandon man, wants to Brandon. get Brandon wants to get me on on the science show that he does. <laughs> and, I, and I'm telling you, man, that is a bad idea. That's a bad idea, uh, dude. But yeah, he hasn't asked me, but I don't know how I'd feel about that because I'm not uh, the wisest guy on the block. <laughs> Let me tell sure you something, guys. He's educated me from watching his show. So, if it was exactly same here, but if it wasn't for the curves I'd be receiving right now, <laughs> yeah, we'd be failing this class, bro. Yeah, it's rough. Yeah. It's rough. I'm not a student by nature, for sure. No. I just I don't do science, y'all. I really don't. But I'll talk yeah. about it as much as I can. But um, you know, Brandon's one that I want to get on the show here. But Brandon works at the time when this is being done, so like, it's kind of yeah. tough to do it. Exactly, kind of scheduling it. is is for sure the biggest challenge when it comes to doing it. Like you, mm -hmm. like we we're talking about with guests. I mean, it just it's and it's nobody's fault. It just is. People have lives and people yeah. have different lives and. It'll always be that way, no matter what. So you got to just plan mm -hmm. accordingly and plan ahead, sadly, as best as you can. Is there anyone that you're hoping to get on, dude? They're like, that you're like Ooh. really trying? Like, uh, it's like in the, it's in the back of your throat and it's itching you that you want to just grab them? <laughs> yeah, two. I think two people that by the end of whenever this show ends, I need to have on the show um, would be one is Chris Stuckman, without a doubt. Um, mm -hmm. I respect that man immensely. And I think mm -hmm. he's one of the people, uh, same with Eric, uh, that got me into film, that got me into exploring different types of film, especially with Chris, anime films, especially. Yeah. I mean, I, I had never seen anime films. I mean, I watched Dragon Ball Z growing up and that's essentially at Tenchu, those series, but I had never delved into thinking about watching anime films. And yeah. he definitely opened my eyes to that same, with Eric, both of them opened my eyes to independent cinema. I've seen so many movies that I would have not known about um, without them. So Chris mm -hmm. would be one that I would love to have on. He seems like a really, from everyone that I know that has interacted with him, mm -hmm. and in my very few like brief Twitter interactions with him, he's a really nice guy, um, yep. and he's an inspiration to me. So I'd love to have him on the show. And Jim Cummings would be another, um, the director and writer of Thunder Road and The Wolf of Snow Hollow. Yeah. I, I would love to have Jim That's on the show. That's one on my bucket um, list too, mainly yeah, because man. I loved Thunder Road. Thunder have you Road. seen uh, Wolf of Snow Hollow? Not yet, but Thunder Road. Right, you gotta was, check it out. Thunder Road is fucking beautiful. Yeah, man. It, yeah, it, this guy knows what he's doing. This yeah. guy knows what he's doing, and I, I, I respect him. And the reason why I'm not saying like a Scorsese or a Spielberg, obviously, I have Departed hanging on my wall. I respect these guys immensely. But the thing with <laughs> Jim is that. He has such a unique voice. I've never seen a movie, movies like his before, truly. Um, the energy that they bring is just so different. I would love to just get inside his head and just learn where these crazy, crazy ideas come from because it seems like yeah. he's got a thousand things going on. I can't wait for his next movie, The Beta Test. I'm super 
happy that IFC yeah. picked it up. So yeah, yeah I was about to say sick, IFC had, uh, picked that up, right? So yep, yep, they did. That's yeah. awesome. I'm so, glad to see them getting more, uh, getting some more no uh, notoriety and, and hopefully making some bigger films and getting some more attention on them. He, he's such movies. an important voice, especially for young filmmakers out there who feel like they can absolutely they can do their work because they're not being financed by a big company, and it's absolutely. like, br bro. You can do it. Like it's just yeah. it's it it takes a little bit of a little bit of time on the self of financing, being able to find financiers and and uh, getting grants and stuff, or being able to you mm. know crowdfund it. But like you know, just because you don't have a big a big uh, company in back of you financing your film doesn't mean you can't make it. Yeah. If that if that was the if I followed by that, I wouldn't be making before I leave right now. Yeah, and that's something I think that also goes into the YouTube. Uh, game as well if you have a, an idea and you have a camera just do it i mean you j yeah. you have to uh, you have to try you have to give it a shot and you have to know what works and what doesn't work and what you enjoy and what you don't enjoy otherwise it's going to be that lingering feeling in the back of your head and the bottom of your heart forever I, I think that was also why i had to come back to the show is just because that that feeling of is anybody watching this? Am I even, you know, is this worth mm -hmm. it, the time I'm putting into it? But I enjoy it. And, you know, and, and, and the same thing with going to making films. I mean, it, it shows when you are enjoying the craft, when you enjoy film, when you love it, when it's your life. It shows yeah. in the work that you do. 100%, man. And um, I thank you so much for coming by, man. Um, Absolutely, dude. It was an honor, bro. Thank you for having me on. It's so cool to be here. Appreciate I have one it. last question, though. You Absolutely. watch from that list that we made on the episode. You watch any of them yet? Which ones did we talk about? I have to go back and, and see. Do you uh, remember off the top of your head? I, did, I don't know, man. I, remember, I don't know what we discussed. I did. I know that I did recommend Underground uh, from Mir uh, Kusturica. Dude, yes. See, that's the one that's at the top of my watch list well, because. Oh, mm -hmm. please go for it. Go for it. Go for it. I say that you should watch it soon because. I might be on a little show talking about that film because it won the oh, Palm awesome. Di it won the Palm Dior and that yeah. week that I'll be on hopefully is based on a Palm Dior winner. And uh, Okay, yeah, I got I got to check this out. And it's it's funny because after our episode, multiple people mentioned to me that I have to see this movie. Yeah. So it's I, I, I Yeah, I have to I have to move that to the top of my list. But also I've seen Stalker only once, and and we've been and you've been talking about it so much, so so much over this past year and a half. But I feel like I just have to <laughs> force that into my schedule somewhere and, and check it out again. D so don't film class. It, it yeah. was awesome. Don't force it into your schedule, but like just you know, if you've got the time and you feel yeah. like you 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 the you know, I hate to say it like this because it sounds pretentious as shit. But like if you're not gonna pay attention to Stalker, no, you have not, to say that. You're dude, not going. You're not true. going to understand yeah. Stalker. And I promise yeah. you all, on the first watch, you're not going to understand this film. And I, I did it because I didn't understand it at the first time. Mm. But the second time, and now this third time I'm going to watch it, there's a lot of things that are starting to click within my head about what Tarkovsky's trying to say within Stalker. Mm. And, you know, there's some stuff that's definitely going to get you, like, like that you're going to know about, like, oh, like, you know, the whole talk about nuclear warfare, uh, his allegories about, uh, you know, about religion, but you know mm -hmm. the stuff about his his uh, his commentary on art and on filmmaking and like a lot of the things that are going on in there like there there's stuff that's gonna go out you know above your uh, uh, over your head if you don't if you're not paying attention so I ask of you that like if you're gonna watch Stalker make sure you have the time Absolutely. to watch Stalker because if you're not paying Absolutely. attention to it it's gonna be yeah, yeah that's the thing man it's like. It, it film is pointless unless you're actually gonna gonna sit there and 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 really invest yourself in that story. And that's a a heavy movie, very heavy. You After that it first watch, yeah, dude, my my first and only cinema class I've ever taken oh. at community college they showed that film. It was one of the films they showed. And and yeah, I mean, I don't Oof. think I fully understand it even now. That's why I want to watch it again. But yeah. I remember the feeling. The feelings I got watching that movie are unlike any other because it just so raw. Like it just feels so real. Like so much of it feels so yeah. real. It's insane. And obviously they filmed in like an actual. Didn't they film in an actual nuclear like mm -hmm. wasteland essentially, right? Mm -hmm. So and and many of the people were affected. Uh, even the director, right? Yeah, Tarkovsky was affected by that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, I mean, it, it show the authenticity of the movie shows and the discomfort and, and, yeah. and just the, the decrepitness of the whole thing. It just, it's insane. Yeah. It's a really crazy film. I, I, I want to check it out again. Yeah. I, I love that movie so much. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, mm -hmm. And then again, I mean, I named my puppy Andre. Uh, you know, Andre Tarkovsky <laughs> yes. is like one of my favorite directors of all time. I, I own mm -hmm. every single criteria release of Andre's work other than Ivan's childhood. And that's because I haven't had the chance to buy it yet. But like, yeah. I love that man. I, that man is, it's, he was beyond, wise beyond his years. He, he, oh, um, absolutely. You know, it's it's crazy. Like him, Kurosawa, so many other directors, like who said yeah, they didn't, man. like who, who, who went on record to say like they really didn't understand cinema, but like you watch their films and you're like, you understand it more than I could ever even that's, think about it, man. Yeah, I think that's the thing though, is that you have to disconnect a certain element of knowledge about cinema to make a movie. I, I mean, yeah. I haven't made a movie, but I think what it shows in the good films is that there's a, mm -hmm. a very clear personal touch to these movies. Even if you look at a movie like John Wick, for example, right? It's an action movie, but the people that made it have been doing this for years. They're stuntmen mm -hmm. that, that, that know this craft better than anybody. And it yeah. shows in the film, right? Regardless of the, how you think quality of the film is, it shows, right? So, yeah, yeah I, I don't think you have to have a, a film school education. I don't think you need to have any type of... Uh, of, of acumen of that regard but i think if you have an idea and, and you have a vision for it i mean yeah. that that is more important than a, a film education for sure or film knowledge yeah. yeah i think a lot of it is just an understanding of art you know if you can absolutely if you can if, if you can look at an art uh, piece of art whether that be literature whether that be music whether that be photography movies whatever it is and you can feel like you're connecting to it on a deeper level than what you're than what is beyond what is on the surface i think that yeah. you have the the capacity to possibly create what you want to create. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And that's what, you know, Tarkovsky, you know, he, his films felt so poetic and he, he loved writing poetry and he loved writing and you could feel it that he just, he understood cinema on a poetic level, on a level that not a lot of people have been able to do as of late. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, his movies, I, I really do want you to watch soccer, but What's it called? You get it. to it when you can, man, because I, I, the la last thing I want you to do is to be real tired. You're like, all right, <laughs> yeah, I'm putting man. on soccer. But like, <laughs> it's so funny because, I mean, we talked about that on our last episode when I watched The Wailing, right? Where I yeah. watched, I started that movie at like 1230 and I was just like, by the end of it, oh man, you know, I was just sitting there getting through it. Yeah. <laughs> but I love that film. So yeah, yeah definitely got to gotta find a convenient space of yeah. comfortable time to sit and analyze it. And I can't wait to talk to you about it after too. Yeah. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, just check out the ocean for underground. You know, just just look on the ocean, and you'll I will find definitely it. be. Dude, I have to take my dip back into the ocean. It's been a minute, and there's so much stuff I've seen on there that you know I need to check out. So yeah, yeah. I need to get back in the ocean, man. Yeah, man. All right, man. It's been fun, y'all. Uh, I've had a wonderful time here with Mikey. Mikey, um, you want to let them know about where you're at and where, you, where they can follow you and all that wonderful stuff? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, on YouTube and on Letterboxd, just Michael Chu, pretty plain and simple. Um, Instagram, Michael Chu underscore, and at Twitter, Michael Chu for real. Obviously, i um, trying to get episodes of Chu on this out as best as I can. They are normally supposed to come out on Sundays, but obviously schedule and life these past couple weeks have been crazy for everybody. So they'll come out when they can, guys. And uh, I have a couple cool uh, long-form videos, film analysis videos, film essays coming out, um, hopefully within these next two or three months. The yes. first one, I'll say it here. I'll announce it here. Uh, Funny Games, 2007's uh, Michael Michael Haneke's Funny Games is going to be my first uh, film essay. So that's going to be a a fun one to do. I've seen that movie two or three times at this point now recently. Absolutely love it. So I can't wait to, to share my opinions on that film with you all. Nice, nice. You know, I fuck with them, them film essays, bro. You know, I, fuck, I yeah, love making man. them. I love making them. I love to see them. So I, I, I figured it was time for me to take a shot at it. I haven't done one yet. So hopefully this works out. It's gonna nice, be crazy. nice. Just, uh, I, uh, I wish you all the luck in that, bro. That, that sounds awesome. I Thanks, can't wait man. for you to, I can't wait to see Thanks. that. Um, yeah, check out those two movies before uh, before before that episode comes out too. You you must if you haven't seen yeah. them yet. I think I own the '90s version of it. I have mm -hmm. not watched the 2007 one though. I haven't watched okay, either one, but sure. I, I own the '90s version of it. For sure, yeah. I can't wait to hear your thoughts. It's it's interesting. I feel like I'm coming in with a hot take immediately yeah. by covering the 2007 version instead of the original already. Yeah. So it's gonna be interesting. It was also odd for me to see that he remade his own movie like yeah that's, 
his own movie, man. Maybe. It's his own movie. It's but, um, it, it's uh, it shows his uh, his growth as a filmmaker. I'll say that yeah. to the 2007 version, in my opinion. So yeah, yeah. it's crazy to see. That's it. great. Yeah, uh, I Haneke is Haneke is is unlike. Uh, oh yeah, Haneke is another one that's like you are wild. You are incredibly talented. Have you seen talented. Caché before? I know sure. you've seen the piano. I think you've seen the Piano Teacher, right? We talked about that briefly. I want to say. Uh, pian- mm, no, I have not watched. I mean, I I, I also own <laughs> the Piano Teacher. Oh, okay, I, okay, know what's okay, called. okay. I need to watch it. The okay. one that I that my mind immediately goes to with Haneke is Amour. See, that's one I haven't seen. Amour, and, bro. I, that you recommended to me, man. Yeah. Y'all who are watching The Father, do yourself a favor and watch Amour. Yeah. Good lord, that movie. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I really got to make my dive through Haneke. But, like, you know, reading about Haneke and, you know, just looking at what the response is to a lot of his work, like, <clears throat> I look at him and I'm like, bro. Yo, it's so up your alley, Raul. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like the piano teacher has the capability of becoming one of your favorite films of all time. I'm not going <laughs> to yeah. lie, man. I, I Well, Isabel Hupa is one of my favorite uh, actresses. She's Oh, okay. She's, but yeah, man. This yeah. movie's right so up your alley, bro. I need to watch bro. it soon. And I know that Patrick watched it, and he was like, as I expected, the piano teacher was really horny. <laughs> horny is an uh, – like, I mean, it's – I don't want to spoil it for you, obviously, but yeah. it is one of the most disturbing movies I think I've ever seen. <laughs> and I was so uncomfortable. Like, horniness is just scratching the surface of what that movie is. So I'm glad Patrick didn't go too deep into it, but he's not wrong. Yeah. The piano teacher is very horny. Yeah. It is, it is true. And as always, y'all can find me at The Nerdy Chigano on both Instagram and Twitter. Twitch.tv slash The Nerdy If you're watching this on Twitch, go ahead and follow me if you're not following me yet. If you're watching this on YouTube... And my Raul Alejandro Mendoza channel, uh, please subscribe. I'm at 45 subscribers at the moment. Get me to 100, please. I need my yes, custom URL. Please. I, don't, I don't care about much. I care about that custom URL, though. Um, yeah, man. You guys, we thank you for the $50 today from Nolan. I will be back on Friday for our World of Wong Kar Wai retrospective stream. As we Ooh. discuss these new restorations, we talk about these movies. Some of these movies I'll actually be talking about like for the first time with you all um because i've watched them multiple times but i just haven't had the chance to actually talk about them on the show so exciting man but um i i'm I'm really excited y'all i'm really 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 looking forward to talking about this these movies because these restorations are special y'all i should not have paid 169 dollars for this this is easily like a 200 (laughs) this is easily a 200 dollar box set right there yeah man it's, it's wild like that the fellini set was was more expensive than this one and like this wow. was worth. This is worth more money than than it is. Yeah, I, I was gonna ask real quick. Sorry, as tears go by, how would you think of it, man? Was that your first watch of it, or this time? No, my second one. I, I okay. second one. If it, you know, it, it's still to me. I'm like it. It's. I hate saying it like it's his weakest because it's it's that's a rank. It's that's, completely fair criticism for sure. But, though I mean. He's made amazing films. Yeah, so the thing is that it's his most, it's his earliest work. It's one of his first works. So the whole time you watch it, to me, it feels like it's, um, it's Wong Kar Wai learning his style and trying to yeah. implement it. But it isn't until he meets like Christopher Doyle and that he really knows, like what he wants. Like because he has somebody who's able to connect with him like that, on a on mm-hmm. a level like. Uh, of, of a director and a cinematographer really learning with each other. I'm going to talk more about it on Friday, and I know you're going to be there on the stream. Yeah, absolutely, but absolutely. There are a lot of parts of As Tears Go By that I love, uh, that I love so much, especially the whole Take My Breath Away scene with the oh music. Oh, my like, goodness, dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my one of the best, my fav- One of my favorite scenes in cinema history is that scene, without a doubt, mm-hmm. man. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The one I got the most appreciation for the second time around, though, Happy Together. Uh, Happy Together. That's a really good movie. I've only seen it once, but I really like that movie. It's so, it, isn't that so inter- It's such an interesting film in his filmography, too. I and mean, what's so, so they, like, I'm giving y'all a sneak peek of Friday, guys. I'm sorry, but this is what happens when Mikey and I get to talk about this stuff. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm sorry. Wong knew nothing about Buenos Aires, Argentina. He'd <sighs> never been there. He had never, what's it called, ste- like lived there. He's that he was. That was his first time stepping foot there and being able to make a movie there. And he depicted it more, be- uh, more beautifully. That's that's not even a, word, a way to say it, but he depicted it in a such a beautiful way that not even 
regional directors have been able to do it. And it's like, yeah, man. it's wild. I like that movie. Like I had, I had it out of four stars and on my second watch, I was like, it's a four and a half easily. Like this is one of his favorite best work. I love that movie. Yeah. I, I would say that the, that film specifically, his direction is so strong. I mean, I've never been to Argentina. I haven't watched very, very yeah. many Argentinian films, but it feels authentic. It feels like this is yeah. someone that has studied this locale and knows the spots. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? So yeah, I can't wait to hear you chat about it, man. That's gonna yeah. be awesome. I need. I, I might have to watch rewatch a couple before uh, yeah. before we get on here. So yeah, man. I I, I recommend y'all to you know, especially y'all like who are looking at those Barnes and Nobles uh sales, waiting for them to come. Once that sale hits, y'all, you you just do yourself a favor, get this because this it. this is this is worth it. Every inch of it is worth it. But yeah, I'll be it. live you on are. Friday for that stream at one o'clock Central Time. And we'll talk about those films, and uh, I'll probably inform you about the next goal that I have for fundraising. But um, for now, the 250, we're almost there, y'all. Uh, we need about like 169 something, 196 dollars, I think. I can't remember. All I know is that we're close, y'all. And I thank you all so much for the constant support that you all give me. You all do an incredible job of uh, you know supporting me and supporting the vision that I have for my my work. And as always, I really do appreciate you all stopping by, whether you were on YouTube or whether you were on Twitch or whether you're listening to this on the audio replay with a little bit of cut in the beginning because I fucked up. But it's whatever, y'all. It's whatever. It's whatever, y'all. Yeah. Thank Come you on. all so much. And as always, uh, I don't have an outro, but I do want you all to stay safe and stay, uh, stay kind out there and treat people with love and respect. And as always, you know, go watch a movie. And if you watch a movie before Friday, uh, let me know what movie you watched and we can talk about a little bit about that. But, um, yeah, take care, guys. And um, Nerd Chicano, I, I don't know. I don't have an outro, y'all. I'll see you It'll happen, man. It'll come naturally. It'll happen, bro. See you guys. <laughs> Bye, guys.